Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 28th. Well, it's not exactly true. It's actually Saturday, April 27th. I'm pre-recording this one. Uh, but by the time you see it, it will be Sunday, April 28th. And uh, just because I always give you a weather update, I can tell you that on Saturday it was cold and windy here uh, in the 50s. Um, don't know what happened to spring, but it seems to have taken a, taken a vacation this weekend. Uh, to, the reason I'm doing this video early is tomorrow I'm actually going to be drive, getting up early and driving to uh, Lancaster, PA, more or less, uh, to attend the uh, Midwestern Tool Collectors Association meeting in Adamstown. Adamstown? Adamsville? I think it's Adamstown. I'll know where I'm going before I go there, I promise. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. It's uh, yeah, it's a big tool swap uh, sort of thing. We can buy or, or sell tools and um, lots of antique tools. I, I like older tools, so really looking forward to it. Uh, and it's not it's not only woodworking, so there could be you know all sorts of interesting stuff there. And I, I could I've talked about this before, but I could just watch you know shows about machining and or videos about machining and uh, knife making and yeah, I, I, it just fascinates me I'm fascinated by the manual arts uh, the, 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 the arts that produce things so I'm uh, this is a shop pipe uh, Orlick Orlick Corona this is one of the Danny Shore pipes and uh, hi Danny hope you're doing well by the way and the uh, in, in Northern Corona, I've got uh, some haunted bookshop. Uh, you'll recall a few weeks ago, I told you that I was very proud that I finally put a jar of haunted bookshop, uh, finally put some haunted bookshop into a jar from one of the pound bags that I've been buying and smoking through before I could get them into my cellar. Well, unfortunately, the jar didn't make it into the cellar. I opened it a few days ago and have been smoking it again. They. I'm reminded of an old, um, it was an old Mike Myers movie where he was playing his own father and his own, he, he, he was a Scotsman, and uh, he's very angry at the, uh, at Colonel Sanders, and Mike Myers asked him why he's so mad at Colonel Sanders, and he claims that it's because he puts a substance in his chicken that makes you crave it fortnightly. So, I think C&D puts a substance in their uh, haunted bookshop that does the same. So I've uh, been, been keeping busy, um, a few more pipes to finish up before I sort of uh, taper off the pipe work for a while because as I mentioned the, uh, the cataract surgery is coming up in early June and I'm just not seeing well enough to really do um, a lot of that stuff. Uh, but I got a few more that I'm finishing up, currently working on... Uh, this stem, which is barely looking like a stem, but it is. Uh, it's all drilled. That's how I start the button work. Um, and now there'll be lots and lots of manual filing and sanding to get that into shape, but it's started. I'm sorry, there, there's a dog and a motorcycle, and uh, I can't do anything about either of them right now. And because it's evening, I am enjoying an adult beverage, uh, which I suppose coffee is technically an adult beverage, but uh, Yingling. Uh, you know, there's folks that love it, folks that hate it. I enjoy Yingling. I think it's a good beer. But I enjoy Miller. I'm not a beer snob. So, I'm going to relight and... Sorry to all you fans of my Zippo, but I left it upstairs, so we're using matches tonight. I keep getting the question, you know, how do you get the flame so big, and, you know, people commenting on it. And honestly, it's not as big as it appears on the video. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. Um, I can't explain it, but when I'm holding the thing here, lighting it, 
It does not look the way it looks when I watch the video of me lighting and the flame is shooting up here somewhere. It, it just looks different on the video. But it is larger than usual. And I didn't realize that because, you know, for a long time I was smoking by myself. Um, when I got the Zippo lighter, I um, at some point set it up so that the wick came to the very top of the chimney. Now really it should be about the middle of the chimney, but the way I do it is I pull it up until it sticks out above the chimney and then I just cut it off flush. And that produces that large flame. I don't recommend doing it because you can burn yourself. Um, I've come close to singeing my eyebrows, but and it is incredibly dangerous. And I'm all kidding aside, it's incredibly dangerous if there's any wind. Um, that flame can wrap around the back of your hand. It, it's really uh, and and of course because the Zippo is windproof, it doesn't blow out. So you you find yourself. You know, if you're trying to light your pipe or a cigar in the wind with that thing, all of a sudden your hands, uh, you're holding it, the flame's wrapping around your hand, the metal's heating up, and all you can do is drop it. <laughs> it I, that happened to me not that long ago. And, uh, yeah, you don't want that. So, use a different Zippo. If you want the big flame, have a separate Zippo that doesn't have the big flame for outdoor use. And be careful. So, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was uh, a question that I've been getting uh, quite a bit. I've gotten several emails about this and uh, talked to a few people who, who had a similar question. Um, and it has to do with pipe care. And the question is, can I use olive oil on my pipe? Now. The short answer is no, <laughs> but let, let me let me qualify that. If you've been using olive oil on your pipe and you're happy and it's keeping your pipe the way you like it and you've been doing this for 30 years or whatever and that's what you want to do, then do it. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Would I do it? No. Uh, so that that's the question. You know, do I think it's a good idea to do this? I don't. And there's there's two reasons why I don't think it's a good idea. One, and, and the, this is really an obvious one, and one that I worry about a lot, olive oil does go rancid. Uh, and I don't really like the idea of having rancid oil on my pipe. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why if, you're, if you uh, are oiling a cutting board, you'd never use olive oil or vegetable oil. You'd use something like um, mineral oil or even walnut oil, um, which you can buy in the grocery store. So there are some oils that would be okay to use because they wouldn't go rancid. Mineral oil is one of them. Uh, walnut oil is another, and, and there's a, you know, a whole list of them. But olive oil is not on that list. Olive oil will turn rancid, and uh, he, I don't want it on the pipe. Now, the other reason is a little bit more complicated, and... This, this isn't really a, I mean, there's some opinion built in here, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to speak authoritatively on this, not that I have the authority to do so anyway, but I just want to make sure you know that some of this is, is my belief. So, what I do know is briar is a very dense wood, very, very dense, and because of that, it really doesn't need any oil to bring out the grain to um, to do the things that oil does to wood. It tends to add depth and and uh, grain texture to the wood. Uh, briar is so dense that just buffing it can get you a very high polish and oil doesn't do anything and in fact it's very difficult to get the oil to penetrate into the briar and the people that cut and process the briar, spend a lot of time trying to get oil out of the briar. Now there is the whole oil curing process and all that's a completely different kettle of fish and I don't want to really get into it, but the point is you don't need the oil. 
Now, there are some some folks that think you actually have to condition the wood or uh, feed the wood. Uh, you, you don't. Briar's not like that. It's perfectly happy to sit there as dry as can be and be buffed every once in a while and have a coating of wax put on it. The other component of this is that you know, Briar, Briar not only doesn't need it, but it doesn't absorb very well into the, into the wood because of the density. And then you're going to inevitably put a coat of carnauba wax over that. Now the problem with that is that anytime you've got two layers of something that, that, is, that are heating up and cooling down and heating up and cooling down, you're going to have differential expansion and contraction. And that could lead to all sorts of problems. You know, cracks in the finish, bubbles in the finish. Um, it's very unlikely that the carnauba wax is going to last as long as it normally would if it's got an undercoating of oil. So, I personally would not put anything on a pipe. I don't put anything on a pipe but carnauba wax. You know, I've got a buffering system so I can do that. Uh, if you don't have a buffer, I've said this before, you should be looking at microcrystalline waxes. Um, Halcyon, Paragon, I don't know if they're made anymore, but those were the, the two big ones for a long time. Uh, there's pipes and cigars and smokingpipes.com are selling a new um, microcrystalline wax. I can't remember the name of it, but just look for the words microcrystalline on it. Um, the other one that, that is actually very good is um, Renaissance, which you can get through Amazon. It's pricey, but a tin of it is, I don't know, maybe $20, $30, but it will last you your entire life. I mean, there's you don't need a lot of it. You just need to dab your finger in and rub it around, let it dry, and then buff it out. So if you don't have the buffer, the microcrystalline wax is what would work best. Barring that, you know, you can do things like beeswax, but the reason why they're not as good to use as the carnauba or the microcrystalline is that their melting point is much lower. And since the pipe heats up, you're holding it in your hand and all that, that wax coating is just not going to last for very long. So, avoid olive oil, avoid all oil, and try to stick to either microcrystalline or carnauba wax. If you need to use other waxes, I guess it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything, but just don't expect them to last a long time. And there is a product, uh, and, and I, I noticed that um, Eric, Blue Collar Pipe Smoker, has been using this product called Howard Howard Feed and Wax, I think it's called. Uh, and I, I specifically looked into that one because I heard him talk about it so much. And that's actually uh, looks like a pretty reasonable product. It, it's a combination of uh, carnauba wax, another wax that I cannot remember, and I think there's like orange, orange oil. It. Now, the orange oil is not going to be a major component of that. It's probably just providing some scent. Um, so it's sort of a... And, and very often when you've got solid waxes like beeswax and, and carnauba wax, if you want to... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I've got an alarm going off here. Just to remind me to do something. When you, when you want to keep a solid wax a liquid at room temperature, you add some oil. And uh, that's just, or if you want to soften it, you add some oil. So the orange oil in the Howard Feed and Wax is really just to soften those waxes that would otherwise be solids at room temperature, but it's also therefore lowering the melting point, and you know, you're going to have all those problems. So I don't think it's doing anything worthwhile, but it's not hurting anything either. So that's a product that you could look at if you, if you really want to use some sort of a liquid um, to treat your pipes, but you're going to have to be treating them a lot, or you're going to have to put carnauba over top of that. So, I hope that answers the question, um, but the most important one is just don't, please don't use olive oil. Um, it, it, that rancid problem is going to be a, be a concern, and uh, we, we don't, we don't want to have to scrape that off. Uh, and again, if you're doing it already, please don't write me and tell me it works great. I'm happy it works for you. This is my opinion. So, folks, with that, I, I hope you're all uh, having a great weekend. Uh, I will, like I said, by the time you see this, I will be at the uh, Midwestern 
tool collectors uh, meeting and I'm really looking forward to that. My biggest concern is that I get home at a time when my wife isn't here so that I can sneak the stuff down here into the shop without her seeing it because you know I'm going to buy stuff. Uh, and oh, I wanted to just give you a quick update on the shop as well. So we have um, finally the entertainment center or TV stand, whatever you want to call it, that I was talking about back around uh, the end of the year last year. Uh, I did complete that over the holiday season, and unfortunately I was not able to... I don't know what this guy's doing out there. I guess it's rev up your motorcycle hour. I wasn't able to, to get it upstairs until just uh, over over East, the Easter holiday, actually. Uh, so the reason was that it actually had to be disassembled because it wouldn't fit up the steps. Uh, and I knew that going into it, so I built it in a way that I could disassemble it and then carry it up and reassembled it. So I got that upstairs, and if I remember, I will, uh, I've got a picture, which isn't a great picture, but I'll insert it here just so you can see uh, what, it, what the final product looks like. I'm very happy with that. And that has opened up a lot of space down here in the shop, so I did order the lights. I have not installed any of them yet, but I have them, and they're quite nice. Uh, so we'll be getting those up in the not-too-distant future. And yeah, you're going to start to see some changes happening. And... Uh, while my vision might be a problem for fine detailed pipe work, I can certainly install lights and hang up shelving. So uh, I'll be doing that until I actually have to get the surgery and uh, then maybe be down a, uh, a few days after that. So something to look forward to, I hope. I hope you're all having a great weekend and look forward to the week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.